Uranium One is a Canadian-based company with its primary listing on the Toronto Stock Exchange and a secondary listing on the JSE. The company has assets in Kazakhstan, the United States, Australia, and is a minority stakeholder in the Kuju River project in Tanzania. Uranium One has a market cap of 18.8 .8 billion rand, a price-to-earnings ratio of 31. A really large price-to-earnings ratio. Paul, are mm. investors really positive about this one? Look, uranium, we'll talk in a minute about the global demand for uranium, which is, you know, mostly from nuclear power stations, obviously, as a fuel. That has been quite soft recently. This company, though, was brought to prominence a couple of years back by Neil Froneman, who's one of South Africa's most, you know, enigmatic and colorful mining uh, cowboys. Uh, the company fell on hard times because they promised a lot they had developed a project called Dominion Reefs out on the West Rand, which totally failed. It was going to be the most marvelous uranium mine in the world, and it turned out to be not really even worth continuing with. In the process of forming Uranium One, because the one thing Neil is really a past master at is creating visibility and brand identity within the listed environment. So they took assets from Kazakhstan, Europe, uh, also uh, the North American market and this and kind of said, look, this is going to be the preeminent uranium play in the world. It's second only to a Canadian company called Cameco, which is the world's largest. It does, though, have quite good assets. And I guess the issue of whether it's attractive at these levels has to do with your view on whether the demand side is going to remain firm. What do you make of the demand side? Will it remain firm? Are we going to be seeing a bit of a turnaround when it comes to uranium? Uh, looking at uranium, I mean, yeah, like Paul says, it's a very, very interesting market because uh, you're, you're only really supplying nuclear power stations or, or people who have nuclear weapons. <laughs> so it, uh, it, does, it does look more optimistic. I mean, I remember when uh, uh, you know, Fukushima came out, I mean, the uranium one got, got absolutely smashed. I mean, I actually took the opportunity to buy there, but uh, uh, and then so later when Germany decided that they were going to scrap the entire nuclear program. But uh, I think at the moment for uranium one, you've got, uh, obviously, you've got the US for the first time, I think, in 30 years, they're now actually, you know, planning on opening new power stations. Uh, you've also got a huge amount of demand coming from, from China and India. Uh, India, I think, want to uh, fast track about 60 new nuclear power stations. Uh, if, you look, if you look at the actual numbers, I mean, they produce uranium, it's about $16 a pound, and they're selling it at about 50. So it really is a volume story. Is the volume going to be there or isn't it? Uh, and it, it looks on the face of it, I mean, you know, with environmental concerns coming in, uh, and also also with the, 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 the US uh, election is also going to be key to the thing, because bo both uh, Obama and Mitt Rodney both want uh, nuclear uh, nuclear energy, but uh, Mitt Romney obviously pushing a lot harder. He wants to try and get the whole process of building a nuclear power station down to about two years. So if you, if you see Mitt Romney coming to power, I mean, you, you could see a kick up in the share price quite quickly. Paul? Yes, look, I mean, coal power stations are now sort of persona non grata, even though South Africa is building two enormous ones. Uh, the sense is that the greenhouse gas emissions are going to be a concern. In rich countries, they can afford to go to renewables and solar. So that's why the Germans can say, okay, well, we won't bother with any of these things that irritate us. There's also natural gas, lots of new natural gas finds. But the French are big in nuclear power now. The Japanese, well, I don't know. They kind of said they were going to stop after Fukushima, but mm -hmm. they can't just stop. And we know that electricity demand continues to rise. And people want electric cars because they want to get away from hydrocarbon fuels in the motor fleet. So I don't know. It's all a rather interesting dilemma. South Africa, of course, is you know very much... This is a pertinent issue for us. Are we going to build new nuclear power stations here? Or do we feel like having very expensive electricity and you know, making it from solar panels or solar concentrators? So hot or not on uranium mm, one, Paul? Yeah, I think it's possible that there could be a long-term value story here. So hot. Well, I'm going to go with not hot not now, hot, but okay. I'm open to being convinced later in the conversation. <laughs> All right. Gary, are you hot or not? Um, I'm going to go with yeah, speculatively hot on okay. this one. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you might, you, like I say, the US election might get a little kick up on share price, but uh, from, from what analysts are putting out, longer term for demand for uranium should, should be increasing.